У тебя получается, как будто игрушечные. Да, они так игрушечные бывают, как получается. Вот есть такой тип, что мы даже установили, это вообще пару советов, которые вот показывают прямо на лайфе. Да? Нет, так и не вкусно. Он вроде, ну, если долго на это дело делали. В конце концов, я приехал сюда.
Deputy Chief Astronaut Mike Barrett. Mike, uh, Soyuz vehicle on the launch pad here in Baikonur after very, very careful, meticulous preparation. This will be the first launch of an American astronaut in the post-shuttle era. Your thoughts on the significance and uh, the importance of this moment? Well, there's a lot of reasons to be significant uh, for this new uh, launch here. Uh, Obviously, with the shuttle's passing, it, uh, the shuttle did what it was designed to do, which was to build the International Space Station. Uh, so now we are turning our, our attentions towards utilization and uh, this uh, world-class laboratory that's in space. Uh, pretty much starting now, will be dedicated almost completely to uh, producing science and technology and everything that we wanted to get the experience of human spaceflight and uh, the knowledge to stay long periods and uh, expect people to be healthy up there and, and very productive. So uh, it's a big time for us right now to uh, see us transition to that era. Just a few months ago, uh, the Russians had the setback with a Soyuz booster, the loss of uh, the unmanned progress. They recently successfully launched a progress to the station. Uh, what is your level of confidence and your thoughts about how quickly they recovered from that? Well, obviously, uh, to get to this point, to have the uh, Soyuz TMA-22 on the launch pad and ready to go, uh, a lot of people gathered, a lot of technicians and uh, very smart people uh, got together to dis dissect this incident that happened with the progress. And uh, I think an unprecedented response, uh, really, was mounted to figure this out. Uh, whole engine blocks, uh, numbers of engines that have been produced were recalled and examined and tested. And I think that uh, the engines that we have now here in the uh, third stage of this rocket are probably those that we're most confident in of any other launch. Uh, I think uh, with the reliability record with the Soyuz over these uh, past decades, uh, I think we're very confident uh, between that <coughs> record and the uh, effort that these guys put into it that this should be a very safe launch. The long months of training for Dan Burbank are now at an end. What is his level of preparedness? What's his mood uh, as he prepares for launch? And how complicated will this increment be? Well, that's a great question. Obviously, we're a few weeks uh, later than we expected to be. And uh, I would say that Dan is about as prepared as anybody has ever been before going to the International Space Station, because we've used that time uh, to do further training. And uh, with the current circumstance, there'll be a very short handover time, as we call it, between the offgoing crew and uh, Dan and his crew. So we've had to maximize training to the extent possible. Uh, the folks on board now, uh, Satoshi and uh, uh, Mike Fossum and uh, Sergei Volkov, they've all sent down training videos and uh, essentially instructions to make that as efficient as possible. I think Dan and his crew are incredibly ready to go. As far as their mission, every mission is complex up there. Uh, one of the things they're going to need to do is back out of some of the decrewing activities that we've been doing in the off chance that uh, we weren't able to launch this Soyuz on time. We wanted to be sure that the station was ready to work unmanned, essentially, to be an autonomous vehicle for a while. Uh, that took a lot to do, and they'll have to undo some of that work. Uh, but then they'll get down to the work of doing science, and uh, that's, of course, what the station was built for. And it won't be long before they'll be joined by uh, the next crew in uh, December. That'll bring us back up to the full crew complement of six, and uh, then again the station can really start to produce.
Meyer, the Associate Administrator for Human Exploration Operations, Bill. Soyuz uh, on the pad, uh, ready to launch on November 14th. This will be the first launch of an American post shuttle. Your thoughts on the significance and how critical this time is uh, to uh, get the uh, station back to a six-person operation and uh, all the increment work that lies ahead. You know, as I, as I think about it, uh, you know, we've been flying on the Soyuz for a pretty extended period of time, even while the shuttle was flying. So I don't see it as a big difference, as this is the first uh, American post shuttle to go fly. But, but I still look at what the Russians are doing and getting the rocket ready to go fly after the progress failure. And they've done a tremendous job of really investigating and thoroughly understanding what's going on. And, and they're ready to go fly today. And it's uh, a really amazing to see the teams working here on the rocket, uh, getting it unbolted, getting it erected, uh, see the Russians going through step by step, getting the rocket prepared, and they're doing a great job today. So uh, I'm very impressed with what I see with the Russians and their teamwork and preparation for today. Only three months uh, have passed since the Progress accident. It was very aggressive uh, work that the Russians did to get into the posture that we're at today. Two launches and a landing now within a five-week period. Uh, your, your thoughts on uh, what this moment in time represents in terms of the, the aggressiveness of what uh, the Russians are attempting? Yeah, it's a pretty, uh, a pretty intense launch tempo they have planned for themselves here. But again, you know, I don't sense any rushing or anything being cut in terms of uh, preparation and preparedness again the Russians are very methodical moving forward kind of step by step and you know even as they prepare the rocket today and they do the unbolting and they do the hydraulic lifts and they do the activities they're pretty pretty standard pretty step by step just kind of moving forward making steady progress. Mike Fossum and his crew on orbit had a slightly different increment over the past three months than they had bargained for. Dan Burbank is slightly shorter increment now for he and his crewmates coming up. How critical and difficult will this period and quick transition be from one crew to the next? Again, the, the things that you don't get to see is how much preparation went into this handover period. You know, there's about four days when they'll actually get a chance to hand over from one crew to the next. But they've done a lot of preparation on orbit. They, you know, Mike Fossum downlinked some uh, high definition video to the crew so they could actually see what it's going to be like to be on board space station. They, they showed them some things that they're going to have to do in terms of maintenance to get prepared. So where the normal handover would have been more face-to-face, -face, they actually did some of it remotely by planning ahead and working with the mission operations team to be prepared. So, you know, it looks easy when you, we see it from the outside and see it get executed. But if you look behind the scenes and you see all the preparation and the thought that went into this to make it work that smooth, that's a testimony to what we're really doing to get prepared. So this extra preparation they did, the extra crew conferences, the extra talking back and forth have been tremendously helpful and, and should set us well to be ready for this uh, pretty short handover period between the two crews. Bill, the um, 2011 represented the 50th anniversary of human space flight. As the year ends and you move into a new year here, between utilization and the advent of commercial vehicles standing in the wings basically ready to come online to service the station, how do you view Again, we've done a lot of preparation to get ready for this period to, to transition away from shuttle into the into the next period of commercial cargo, and 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 I think again we're prepared. You know, we we we're, you know we may get surprised, but but we're ready to move forward. Uh, there's also a tremendous amount of research going on on board space station. You know, every day I look at the status reports, and there's probably five or six scientific investigations being done every day on board space station. So this period of time with the three crew, they've done a tremendous job of actually doing some really quality research. You know, some of the combustion experiments that, that Mike Fossum have been looking at have yielded some really amazing results. We see some things with, uh, we're actually burning some uh, heptane uh, propellant uh, in space. We actually see how that performs in, uh, in the, the microgravity period of space with no convection. And, and it's amazing. The researchers are very intrigued by the results they're seeing. So I think the, the thing that, that most folks don't get a chance to see is how much real research and scientific investigations are getting done during this period. And, and it's a real tribute to Mike and the, and the crew on orbit that they were able to do this with a pretty reduced uh, 
crew size and a very different schedule than they had planned. But again, by being adaptable, being flexible, and being prepared, they were able to really make it look very smooth. Finally, how complex will this time frame and this increment be for Dan Burbank and a month from now when Don Pettit launches uh, to join him with his crew? Again, overall, a, a pretty dynamic period in terms of launches and vehicles coming up. You know, we have the automated transfer vehicle uh, scheduled for next March uh, launch. We have the commercial cargo guys coming online uh, pretty soon. Uh, just a very, very busy period. So again, I think the thing we learn is to be prepared, to be flexible, to be agile, to be ready to change. And, and as life plays a slightly different scenario than you thought, or things don't work exactly right, if you've got that right mental attitude and you've been prepared, you're ready to adapt. It looks seamless. It looks like you're ready and nothing really happened, but in reality, it's a, it's a tribute to the preparation and the thought that goes into this. And, and again, I can't say enough about the Russian preparation for this launch. They've, they've done a great job of being prepared. They've looked at everything thoroughly. They're ready to go into this period. It, it's an exciting time watching this transition and start to see this kind of new phase of spaceflight uh, as we move forward.